Hello, welcome to Straw Family Farm, take two. I'm Christy, and in the chapel this morning we have uh, Philippians 2.5. Your attitude should be the same as that of Jesus Christ. Um, at work I've been dealing with a lot of people who just, I don't know, they were really rude, really, uh, just, it seems like everybody is tired of the way the world is today, and they're taking out on everybody else around them. So I've decided to have a better attitude regardless. I'm going to kill them with kindness. <laughs> so, all right. In the basket. Well, we'll start with Totally Hooked first. Um, I have three more um, of the gifts that I need of the ten. And the first one that I did this week and no the ends aren't woven in I have this one which is just a headband just a twisted headband and it's done in a tan color and then I have the white and gray one that I was doing last week I finished it up it's good to go and then I made another cowl and again just need to weave in the ends and those are all done I literally have one more of those to do. So I'm going to look and see how many headbands I've made and how many cowls, and that will dictate what the last one is. So then I'll have those 10 done. And then I, uh, I'm going to use this gray right here. I have one row, and I'm just going to do a simple hat um, where you make the square, zip it up the back, and scrunch it together at the top. So, um, kind of like a beanie, I guess. I don't know what you call those hats. They're so simple. You use whatever stitch you want, and, and they're just super simple. I still have this much left from doing the cowls and that, and I will finish that one. And then I don't know what I'll do. That'll probably just be extra yarn, and that project is done. Um, I have the one more again these are already designated for um people so that's all i have for totally hooked but in the basket i have several things and this is the shawl that y'all saw i have to do there's 12 of these center things and i'm one two three four five six seven eight nine i've started the tenth one and so yeah i'll have i should have it done this week i'm hoping to so it depends on how much time i have um this is my long week at work i normally do a long week and then i do a short week and a long week and a short week so yep that one i'm down to the orange um the yellow and the orange are the constant through this one and i just have the a little bit of the purple and then I've got the orange and the blue. So it should be done. I don't know where my hook went. Uh, I will find it. I will find it. Um, but I should be done with that one. Um, I'm hoping this week and get the hat done and the cowl done. And then I'm done with that group of stuff. I really don't know where that needle went. Hmm. Uh, I'll find it. Okay, the other thing, the next two that I'm going to concentrate on um, is this one and it is the uh, scarf and I'm going to concentrate on getting this one out of the basket and the other I don't I probably won't get all this done this week, but I'm hoping in the next two weeks, maybe, to get it done. Um, so, this one is another one. And then, finally, this one, which I'm actually thinking I might keep. I don't know. I've looked at this. I really think it's cute. I might actually put a lining in it and use it as my bag for work. But it is the, 
to let me see lots of pictures but not the completed and it's that one right there that bag and so far i've gotten i've just been working on it here and there to break up with the monotony of making those headbands because believe it or not making those just it gets monotonous <laughs> so i have this much done of one square and i have to make three squares um two of them are one size and and the other one the bottom one is a little bit smaller or bigger i can't remember um but yeah um no it looks like they're the same size just you add on and do the handle onto them and then you just stitch them together in the little triangle way so yeah but i am hoping to have that one done and i'm thinking i might actually keep it for myself i like those colors i like the way it's working up i like the stitch but um i have yet to find a crochet bag that i like without a lining so um yeah uh i think that's all i have i was tempted this week to put something on the wheel but i didn't i just ran out of time and i was like i want to spin i want to spin i have plenty of fiber to spin i just haven't gotten it done uh let's see in the fields i haven't had time to do anything so i guess we're going to move right on into rj's world because this one probably will be a little bit short um rj has been dealing with the truck and the house and um he did send me that's something else that i spent time i lost time on the crocheting because he sent me some more shirts and he had to have his uh sponsorship patches put on them so i spent one afternoon sewing i fixed some snaps i still have one button he's got to bring me one shirt he said one of his buttons busted on his um lyle shirts if you don't remember he his first sponsorship was uh lyle ropes and strings and they sent him patches to put on his shirt so he's got his patch on his shirt that i put on i just sew them on they're pretty easy but if you know rj he doesn't iron very well so i've had to iron everything and put the patch on and then touch it up because you know when you sew it kind of bunches you know so anyway did that he does have his second sponsorship i don't know if i mentioned that in the other um videos but he got his professional permit sponsored by uh lafayette horseshoeing and of course rocky's been our horseshoer for a long time um he says it's his marketing ploy he doesn't ask for anything other than to be tagged in the videos that rj puts up there so that other customers can see that he is doing high performance horses um, that he is shoeing them and he's been our sh horseshoer since he was he's actually a carpenter by trade his dad was a horseshoer and he's always done ours i mean i've never had i had one other horse that when i was first looking for a horseshoer i let this other guy do him and i was so mad at the way he treated the horse and how he did it and it looked horrible and just ugh. so i found rocky and Rocky has been our horseshoer for literally well over 30 years. And he decided that he's going to sponsor RJ's professional permit. And RJ got the paperwork, got it filled out. But he doesn't have to put any patches on or anything. He does have a uh, LaFayette horseshoeing ball cap that he wears before he switches to his cowboy hat. So he wears that at all the rodeos and um, switches to his uh, cowboy hat. When he, because in the arena you can't wear a ball cap; you have to have a cowboy hat on. Yes, there's a dress code. So anyway, that was going on, and it did take a little bit of my time to do that. Uh, in the farmhouse, I have just been working. Um, roommate. Has a sinus infection i think um just allergies sinuses all that stuff so i've been kind of staying clear <laughs> i don't want to get sick if you remember i had like sinuses going on um oh, i don't know two weeks ago 
I don't know, you'll see it in the videos, but I don't want it back. And so I don't know if he's, if roommate has like a little cold going on with him or, or what, but I'm not. Mm. So, uh, at work, we've also had one person quarantined with COVID and they were, uh, vaccinated, fully vaccinated and still got COVID. Um, and she had it really bad too. She didn't end up in the hospital or anything, but yeah, she said it was bad. Um, so there's not much going on here, uh, just because I've been, I haven't picked another room to start on. There are rooms that I need to do, but I haven't done them. <laughs> uh, this floor in here, I really need to scrub it, maybe even hit it with a little bit of sandpaper and reseal it, but I haven't. I actually prefer on these older floors to use Thompson's water seal just because that way it seals it up and it doesn't change the color or the integrity of the wood. So, um, we're fighting bugs. I will say that we've had some wolf spiders and some hay spiders and they're as big as your hand. Like, ugh. So, yeah, Worm found one. I was sitting on the couch, and I don't even know where he got it because he was up on the couch with me. And he, uh, yeah, I don't know where he found it. That's the problem. He was walking back and forth on the couch. I'm sitting here crocheting, and I look up. He's chewing on something. I was like, what are you chewing on? Now, he's a puppy, so he chews on everything. And when I picked him up to see what he had, it was a big old spider. And he had killed it. That's great. <laughs> So, yeah, worm is protecting mommy. <laughs> I'm okay with that. <laughs> but other than that, guys, this wasn't going to be a short one. That really is all that's going on. Um, I have, today, I am going to do some more crocheting. I really want to knock this um, shawl out and get it done and get the other get the hat and the last um, either cowl or headband I don't know which I have left to do um, but get those done and then I think I'm pretty much ready for Christmas except for something for RJ and something for roommate and that's it so I am really happy with that and again I haven't been buying anything so the other thing that I have going on isn't really going on yet, but uh, my boss has two sheep, and she sheared them when I first started. She sheared them this spring when she first started, when I first started at the clinic, and then she's got some rabbits, and she groomed out her rabbits and got me some rabbit, and she's going to do all of those, and we're going to blend the rabbit with the wool, and we're, she wants a blanket. She says, I want a blanket. And I said, okay. And she says, do you think I'll have enough? And I said, well, the good thing about doing a blanket, I can do it in a way that we can make it as big or as small as she, as she has wool for. When you run out of wool, you're done. So whatever I do, I was thinking, I was very tempted to do a log cabin style, you know, because that's a square. I would prefer that it be rectangular, but I don't know. It, it might just be, I, I'm going to find a really simple, easy pattern. I'm not doing it in granny squares. I, I just don't think that that would show off the wool. And she is super excited because this is wool she grew. Um, she's never had anything like that. You know, she, she's not done anything. She's never met anybody that uses the wool. So she is like, yeah, whatever. And I was like, don't you throw that away. And she goes, well, it's not very good. And they're rescues. They are rescues. She has taken them in. They were poor in health. And I looked at her and I said, rescue is what we've done. And it's where I got my start in my wool journey. And I love it. So she was like, really? And then she was brushing her rabbits. And she had this little bag. You know, rabbit, it takes a lot. She brushed one rabbit. She got a little fuzzball and she uh, was 
she brought it to work and I was like, I have to touch it. <laughs> and she was laughing. She goes, okay. And I said, you know, this is, this is the soft stuff. This is cashmere. And she, she had read a little bit about wool and that she goes, well, if we use a rabbit, is it going to have any memory? And I said, your memory comes from the wool from your sheep. I said, it'll have plenty of memory. You're going to have more wool than you are rabbit, but the rabbit's going to be put in to kind of soften up the wool because it's not, it's not great fiber, but it's fiber and you don't throw fiber away. Okay. There's always something you can do with it. And I'm hoping to have enough to make her children, maybe some little felted, um, some things, maybe a little, make some little hearts for their Christmas tree. There's four in their family. And I could make like four felted hearts, I think, or something so that they have those and they can go on their Christmas tree or they can go in their room, but that way each one of them has a tangible item. And then they have, this comes from the sheep that made this blanket, you know, kind of thing. So I'm shooting for that, but I haven't got to start that yet. I do know that my Mary Maxim kit is supposed to be coming. That's one of the reasons why I'm trying to get this tote gone. And then, like I said, I'm not, even if the kit comes, <laughs> I say, I, I know, I always say this, I'm not going to start it until I have these two done. This is my personal goal. So I want to have this one done. And I've already made one of these. Um, I just don't like the blue stuff. Remember, that's that N-O-R-O. N -O -R -O, and it pulls apart. It doesn't have enough twist. It's just not a high quality yarn that I would ever purchase. And so getting myself to do this one is hard. And if you know me, green is not one of my favorite colors. So, <laughs> but that's okay. I will get that one done and hopefully get this one. And then um, I think I'm going to make a liner for it. I don't know what color liner or anything like that. So probably just a plain white with a cute little print on it. Um, if I can find something in those mobby colors, um, muted colors, I'll probably do something like that. Uh, maybe a, if I could find something in the purpley pinks there, that's it. They're muted. It doesn't look so good in the bag, but this color right here, this, the purple, it looks more gray on camera, but it actually is more purpley. There we go. If I find something in this color, that would be make the bag more mine. Um, green, meh, I don't like green, so I'm not going to do the lining in green. But it may just be a white lining. So we'll get it done and, and see how it turns out. But I am working on those. I'm hoping to have the um, one done today. RJ did call me and found my hook. <laughs> I don't know where it was at. Uh, yep. It's in there though. Okay. So now it's across the room. Um, RJ did call me last night and he's like, mom, I lost my needle, um, to make my burners. And he makes a lot of his own tack as you guys know. And he busted, I had given him a, an upholstery in it. Well, it's like a metal needle, but it's for weaving in uh, leather stuff and kind of like an upholstery needle, but it doesn't have a sharp point. And uh, so anyway, he has had it since he was probably 15. And after 10 years of use, it busted. So he called me, I dug those out and I do have some more of those for him. So I spent, you know, 30 minutes looking through my stuff. Do y'all have that problem? You know you have something, not just, I didn't have just one pack of those needles, I had two, and I had to find just one of them. Of course, when I found one, I found both, because I have them together. I'm not that disorganized, but I couldn't remember, did I put them in this tote up here? Did I put them in my sewing box? Where did I put those? And uh, so, yeah, I did that, and then um, I was looking for something in the Christmas tote, so the Christmas tote is all over. Um, but yeah, I just, today I'm just going to put the house back together, um, sit and crochet, kind of take it easy. I've got a few dishes to do and some laundry to do, but nothing major. So if I get a chance, I'm literally going to push to get that. Um, I did block 
the other two shawls, the virus shawls. These, um, I don't know if I still have them on. If I have them on here, I will pop the pictures of them blocked um, onto the end of my video here. But I don't know if I kept them or not. I did. So, I'm getting pretty proficient at popping pictures in, and you will see those right here. Okay, so those are the pictures and those are the two blocked. The one with the blue that ends in the yellow is the same one as this, only I started from the center of the ball. This one I started from the outside of the ball, so those two will match and those two are for the two vets. Um, the other one that is the pink and green, and in that picture it doesn't show the green. You guys saw it, it's got a little bit of sparkle in it. That is for our office manager. So, and they they are prayer shawls. Okay, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Um, these people work hard. They deal with a lot of things that other people don't have to deal with. They're under a lot of pressure all the time. And uh, at our monthly meeting, as a matter of fact, they talked about um, how the suicide rate of veterinarians is way up during COVID. Um, and it's because more people are getting pets, more people are doing, and yet the same number of vets are available. So there's more pets, more people with pets, same number of vets. And we are slammed some days. Uh, and of course, uh, we have a couple of other um, emergency veterinarian clinics that have actually cut their hours because they're not fully staffed. So our office is lucky enough to be one that's fully staffed, but the amount of people coming in is like astronomical compared to what it was years ago. So, um, yeah. And I say years because 2019, the office was handleable with one reception two kennel techs, you know, one office manager. It was literally an office of two, six people, seven people, and now we're up to 12, and they're still kicking our rears. So, yeah, but that's okay. It, it does make the day go fast. Um, matter of fact, they were laughing because they say, in your downtime, don't forget to do your training. None of us have had time to do our training. So I've been working on it literally at home and turning my hours into the office manager because yeah, she was laughing. She was, at least you're making progress. I have six weeks of training from when I first started and there physically has not been enough time to do it at work. So I am to week three though. So yay for me. <laughs> she was laughing. She says, you're like, what was it? 39% done and she says it'll get there so we just have to keep working on it but it's just one of those things and and people are just tired of dealing with COVID but I am gonna say this and this is my personal opinion and it goes with the whole philosophy history death does repeat itself historically if you go back and look any pandemic or um, look at the plague, look at smallpox, look at anything, uh, anything that killed a lot of people. The first wave was a lot less intense than the second. People would think they'd get it under control, they'd get slack, and then the second wave typically took more lives than the first just history so I'm hoping that COVID isn't that way I'm, I'm hoping that we've come far enough to know to not let it get that far and that we really need to keep due diligence on all our safety measures so um, we're still wearing masks at work we're still you know matter of fact I've got 
Um, RJ's bringing me some stuff, and I'm going to make some cute little masks for me um, for work because I'm kind of tired of the white ones. I can't. It's making my face break out. They, they're the white ones that go across here, and yeah, it's just not. So I'm going to make me some, some that I can talk through and still be understood and not when I suck in air to talk, it sucks up against my mouth. Um, yeah. It is what it is. But anyway, I'm going to make some of those this week, but I want to get the cowl and the shawl done and the hat done so that I'm done with my work stuff. It's not work stuff, but it, it's my Christmas for work. So, yeah, I'm good with that. Uh, other than that, I think everything else is going good. Um, just working on my attitude to kill them with kindness. <laughs> I know everybody's sick of it, but I'm going to start trying to kill them with kindness because it's like, did you really just say that? You know, uh, people are saying things in public they never would have said before. Um, and it's just, I think they're just tired of the whole COVID and want to get back to normal. But the truth of the matter is normal has changed. I know I'm the only one saying that, but everybody refers to the new normal. Normal has changed. Um, normal means going back to the way it was in the 50s and 60s where you wash your hands constantly, you keep your personal space. Um, it wasn't, you know, you greeted each other with a handshake, not a big full body hug. Um, which to me is appropriate. And then of course you wash your hands after the handshake. So, um, yeah, I do think that it's going back to that and it's not that it's a bad thing. It's just the way it is. So, um, I'm going to work on myself a little bit and get these crochet projects done and hopefully have a little bit more of a, um, progress to show you next week. So, and if I have time, I am putting something on the wheel. I'm itching to spin. So, uh, I've got those uh, natural wool back there and I may spin some of that up and see how it goes because two of those are some that I have never tried before so yep all right I'm gonna get off of here and I will talk to y'all later and I'm gonna get back to work doing the household stuff and some crochet kind of take it easy but get some work done talk to y'all later God bless y'all thanks for watching